Welcome to Healing and Justice Tautala, episode number one, Tasi, date November 22, November 22nd, 2020. This is a urgent public appeal, escalation of the Western Sahara conflict and repression in occupied territories. I dedicate this episode to all of my so family and indigenous people of Western Sahara, Swahari people of Western Sahara, hashtag free Western Sahara and hashtag nomads HRC, who want a voice, their freedom and their self-determination and a future without threats of fear and violence. And this is report was published in November 2020 of 2020 by the Norwegian Support Committee. The background of the slideshow is from the report and a recent photo of Moroccan police in city of El Way. El IU occupied Western Sahara on the 15th of November of 2020. Feel free to distribute and publish this report. If you are in need of additional information, please contact the undersigned organizations at M-C-A-R-R-I-O-N D-E-Q-U-E-S-A-D-A at protonmail.com or tone.s.mo, T-O-N-E dot S at M-O-E at protonmail.com. I share this report knowing well that countless people have been arrested, detained, detained, tortured and killed. I share this information with others to share immediately. This is the urgent public appeal, escalation of Western Sahara conflict and repression in the occupied territories, 20 November, 2020. Dear friends, we are issuing an urgent public appeal in response to the alarming increase of, of repression and violence against Swahari citizens in the territories of Western Sahara under Moroccan occupation. Following the recent escalation of the 45 year conflict between the Posaro Front and Morocco, the situation is extremely dangerous for Sahari citizens as Morocco launches a massive campaign of collective intimidation, harassment, and mass arrest. Due to Morocco's effective ban, there are no international observers or media on the ground. We need international organizations to shed light on these abuses and for Morocco to know that it cannot act without impunity. On 13th November, a 29 year long ceasefire between the Kingdom of Morocco and the Western Sahara under the leadership of the National Liberation Movement, Hosaro Front, came to an end. Following a military 
operation carried out by Morocco against a group of peaceful Swahari citizen civilians in a buffer zone located in the southern tip of Western Sahara, a grave violation of the ceasefire accord. Bossaro proclaimed the end of the ceasefire and the UN-led peace process, and consequently the resumption of war. Without the escalation of war between Morocco and Plasaro, we have witnessed fierce repression in the occupied territories of Western Sahara. Since the 13th of November, there is an increase in massive presence of Moroccan military, gendarmerie, police, and intelligent forces on the streets of the occupied Western Sahara. These armed units are terrorizing Sahari civilians with night raids on the homes of civilians and activists and the rounding up and mass arrest of young people are well as beatings and other forms of abuse. Sahari activists and human rights defenders report a massive campaign of collective intimidation and harassment. Parts from trusted sources say that in response to street protests and in support of the Sahari right to self-determination on 13th, 14th, and 15th of November, a total of 25 young Saharis have been arrested in the last days. The youngest, reportedly 12 years old, and most reported to be 16, between 16 and 17 years old. Scenes of streets filled with police vehicles and agents have been caught on camera by eyewitnesses. Right before the end of ceasefire this past November 13th, several prominent Swahari activists, including award-winning Amanata Haridar, have been targeted for harassment and increased surveillance, surveillance for creating a new organization named ISCOM, whose primary goal is to end the Moroccan occupation of Western Sahara. The main prosecutor in the occupied city of El Ayu have announced an investigation into whether ISCOM's founders had violated laws in Morocco that criminalizes activities threatening the regime's territorial integrity. We are concerned that Morocco might use the current situation and its perceived impunity to make good on its threat. The situation of the two last months have been categorized with the continue, continued persecution of Sohari human rights defenders belonging to ISCOM, Kodesa, and other Sohari human rights organizations with the continued and systematic prosecution of Sahari journalists attempting to document and report on what is happening in the occupied territories. The repression escalated in the last abduction and torture of two Sahari activists, Ali Saadoni and Noor Eddin Ghobi, on 10th of November. For decades, Morocco has tried to ensure that there are no international witnesses to its human rights violations in Western Sahara. The UN peacekeeping forced in Western Sahara, MINURSO, set up to oversee the promised referendum, does not have human rights monitoring within its mandate, despite numerous calls by human rights organizations such as Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch in response to rights of human rights violations by Morocco against the Sahari population. In addition, there is no practical de facto Moroccan ban on the international human rights monitors and media in the territory. Saharis who tried to fill this void, including citizen, journalist, and human rights defender, are practically targeted for harassment, arbitrary arrest, and judicial harassment. This means that the only witnesses to their own conditions as victims of human rights violations are Sahari civilians themselves. 
through images captured clandestinely at great risk to their lives and via frequent reports through social media and other means. Soharis has been sharing information these past days on these abuses and plead for help from the outside. We need to respond to their urgent calls before it is too late. Western Sahara is listed by the United Nations as a non-self-governing territory subjected to the right to self-determination in conformity with the principles contained in the UN General Assembly Resolutions 1514 and 1541. In 1975, Morocco invaded Western Sahara, a territory in which it does not hold sovereignty over. Since that time, a part of Western Sahara, estimated to be around 80%, have been placed under occupation by the Kingdom of Morocco and subsequently illegally annexed. To this day, the situation in the territory remains a humanitarian crisis with systematic, gross human, human rights violations and breaches of international humanitarian law being committed as direct consequences of the prolonged illegal military occupation. Morocco has, as occupying power, the de facto control both over the territory and the people living on the occupied land who are deprived of their civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights. What can you do to respond to the calls coming from the occupied territories of Western Sahara? We encourage individuals to, number one, reach out to elected public officials in your city or area and ask them to highlight the issues of Western Sahara and the repression in the occupied territories. Number two, write an article in your local newspaper or contact journalists to make them aware of the escalations of the Western Sahara conflict and the repression in the occupied territories. Number three, Organize a demonstration or meeting in your community in order to protest the continued illegal occupation of Western Sahara and the persecution of Sahari human rights defenders. Number four, use your social media platform to tell about the suffering of the people of Western Sahara and join the international campaign, hashtag referendum now for hashtag Western Sahara. Number five, Encourage five of your friends or family to do the same. To respond to the calls coming from the occupied territories of Western Sahara, we encourage national NGOs to, number one, write a letter to your national government and ask them to denounce the current situation in the occupied territories of Western Sahara. Number two, write a letter to United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres and urge him to immediately take action to prevent a humanitarian crisis in the occupied territories of Western Sahara. And number three, write a letter to the Moroccan government and ask them to ensure respect for their obligations, both under international human rights law and international humanitarian law, and to ensure that all Sahari activists and civilians are free to conduct their activities and express their opinions without fear of any form of retaliations. Number four, take public actions on writing an article or issuing a public appeal or create a campaign in the support and the support of the right to self-determination for the people of Western Sahara and denouncing of the continued illegal occupation and the repression of the occupied territories of Western Sahara. And number five, organize a demonstration or meeting in your community in order to protest the continued illegal occupation of Western Sahara and the persecution of Sahari human rights defenders. To support your work, support you in your work. We provide you with further information into the recent escalation of the conflict since the 13th of November in the appendix. 
information on the conflict and relevant practices of the UN human rights mechanism is also provided. Appendix. The present appendix provides information into the recent events in the, in the occupied territories of Western Sahara and the escalation of the conflict. The present appendix includes 1. Summary of repression witnessed in the occupied territories of Western Sahara. 2. Fact sheet the escalation of the Western Sahara conflict and the repression in the occupied territories. Three, the Western Sahara conflict and relevant practice of the UN human rights mechanisms. Number one, summary of repression in the occupied territories, mid-November, 2020. On 13th of November, Moroccan forces launched a military intervention into Gurgurat, a buffer zone in the southwest corner of Western Sahara, targeting nonviolent Sahari protesters who had blocked a Morocco-built road in the zone since 20 of October. The road, paid by Morocco in 2016 in contravention of the UN-sponsored ceasefire and military accords between Morocco and the Fossaro Front was a strategic route for Morocco to import and export goods towards Mauritania and West Africa. And the blockade was resulted in long lines of backed up traffic in both directions. The protests were well documented by the Suharis themselves who shared photos and videos of the civilians chanting, holding up signs, digging up the asphalt, and even playing traditional Sahari games or dipping their feet into the nearby waters of the Atlantic Ocean. On several occasions, the protesters allowed specific travelers to cross, including Senegalese, Martinians, and some Moroccans. They did not allow the circulation of trucks laden with products, which they had said included resources plundered from Western Sahara. Reports on the ground indicated that the Moroccan military entered the buffer zone by making a breach in a wall built by Morocco that separates the Plosaro controlled Western Sahara from the territory occupied by Morocco, and the Plosaro whisked the civilians to safety. According to some images, the small camp erected by the protesters were set on fire. The Plosaro Front responded to the Moroccan intervention on the 13th of November, stating that it was a serious breach to the 29-year-long ceasefire between the two parties and declaring it to be over. During the night of 13th of November, Plosaro launched military attacks in the form of artillery strikes at the Morocco-built wall, dividing the territory of Western Sahara in two. Further military attacks were reported on 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, and 19th of November. On 13th of November, corresponding with the end of the 29-year-long ceasefire, the occupied territories of Western Sahara witnessed a wave of military, gender Mary, police, and intelligent forces entering the cities further strengthening the military siege imposed. Swahari activists, journalists, and human rights defenders found themselves effectively under house arrest, with their houses completely besieged by Moroccan applying forces. There are reports that houses of prominent activists were attacked by Moroccan forces, throwing rocks and knocking on their doors, trying to enter, terrifying and intimidating the activists. Reports were simultaneously received that the Sahari political prisoners of so-called Gadim Zik group held in Kentara 
in Tefelt prisons were being subjected to verbal assaults, intimidations, and increased isolation with the prisoners continually, constantly monitored, monitored by prisoner, prison guards who are especially concerned about the health and safety of human rights defender and political prisoner, Ahaya Mohammed El Havi Azara, who remains disappeared since October of 13. When he was removed from his cell at Bozarkam prison and taken to an unknown location after telling his family that he had been exposed to a prisoner ill with COVID-19. We fear that Yahaya's case may indicate Morocco's intent to weaponize COVID-19 against Wahari political prisoners. In an urgent appeal, Frontline Defenders has called for Morocco to allow his family access to the El Hath Aza and to release him. During the night of 13th of November, massive protests in the occupied cities took place, particularly in the capital of El Ayu, with young Suharis coming out to the streets to protest Morocco's military intervention in Gurgarat. On 14th of November, protests continued, now in support of the Saro declaration of ending the ceasefire. The Sahari journalist organized Equipi Media reported that the streets of Samra, Tantan, Fasib, Mazara, Al Batmat, Al, -Al Nada, Hai Al Nahada, and Zenga Al Shraf Al Radi witnessed hundreds of protesters, among them women and men. The protests were repeatedly met with excessive police violence and arrest. On the 15th of November, in response to the protests, the Moroccan police and intelligent forces raided several homes of Swahari civilians and activists, reportedly looking for young Swaharis that participated in demonstrations of 13th and 14th of November. According to Equip Media, at least seven young Swaharis were arrested in the evening of the 15th of November. Protests again erupted in the cities of the occupied territories in, in support of Plasaro and the Sahari right to self-determination. On 16th of November, Moroccan forces raided the homes of several Sahari activists and civilians. Reportedly, the police were looking for young Suharis who had participated in the protests on the day prior. According to Equip Media, following the raid of the 16th of November, a total of 25 young Suharis had been arrested. The identity and current location of some remain unknown. On the 16th of November, the police had raided the homes of Mohammed Adi and Sharif Bakahir. Two Suhari journalists from the media collected Nashaka Foundation. They were repeatedly able to flee and they, as well as other journalists from, have come into hiding. Frontline Defenders Resources references the situation in its most re recent urgent appeal. Since November 13th, Nishahata has covered the protests and communicated with international media. On the 17th of November, reports received about the continued massive presence of military, police, and intelligent forces, according to activists. The repression, including raids on homes and collective arrests of the days prior, has led to the muffling of demonstrations, with many civilians not daring to enter the streets. On the 18th of November, the local activists reported arbitra arbitrary violence was carried out by Moroccan forces against Wahari civilians and activists in the streets of occupied cities. Also, on 18th of November, Moroccan authorities at El Ayu airport prevented prominent Swahari human rights defender Amanato Haidar, president of ISCOM and winner of the Right Livelihood Reward of 2019 from boarding an aircraft bound for Spanish Canary Islands. Haidar recorded a video from the airport explaining what had happened and saying that her son had been allowed to board along with the rest of the passengers while she had been told that she needed a negative PCR test. Spain will not be requiring PCRs for travelers until November 23rd, and Hadar reported that no other passengers were asked for a test. Please see below for further up. On 18th of November, 
reporters, reports were also received that a 12-year-old Swahari girl had been arrested and tortured by the Moroccan police after having attended school wearing a t-shirt with the flag of Western Sahara. On the 19th of November, reports were received that prominent Swahari activist and human rights defender Sultana Kaya was detained and abused at a checkpoint between the cities of El Ayu and Bolhador after returning to the occupied territories from Spain. Reports state that she was beaten under police custody. According to local activists, she was, re she was released from custody after 1.5 hours, and before her release, her house was surrounded by Moroccan police. Before Sultana arrived home, the police had raided her home and subjected her mother to aggression, leaving the mother in a critical condition after having her hit her head. Activists are currently prevented from visiting them and family is unable to obtain medical help from a trusted doctor. On 19th of November, in response to Amanato Hadar having denounced her illegal ban on traveling the previous day, Royal Maroc Her Airlines issued a statement that Manata Hadar had tested positive for COVID-19. Reporting about the incident, the BBC quoted the document by Rolo Air Marat stating that the reason of Hadar's flight ban was that she had tested positive for COVID-19, which Hadar promptly denied through another video taped statement in which she had also called on the ICRC and human rights organizations to re assume responsibility in protecting human rights defenders in Western Sahara. It appears that Hadar was singled out for discriminatory treatment through the weaponization of COVID-19. A prominent pro-Morocco activist by the online name of Zin El Abdidine El Oali, whose profile information states he is vice president of the Sahara League of Democracy and Human Rights, LSDDH has shared on his Twitter account an official looking document with Moroccan Ministry of Health letterhead that included Hadar's passport number and which stated that on the 12th of November, she had tested positive for COVID-19 per a lab test called Kamar. Per a lab called Kamar. We have not been able to verify the document, but we are deeply concerned about the nature of this type of online activity, which can induce to hatred, stigmatization, and violence. Currently, few Sahari activists, journalists, and human rights defenders dare to go to the streets in fear of retaliation, increasing the chances that human rights violations will be go unheard, unreported. Number two, the escalation of the Western Sahara conflict and the repression of the occupied territories. Below, the events of 13th of November, 14th of November, 15th of November, 16th of November, 17th of November, 18th of November, and 19th of November are provided in a chronological order. The present fact sheet is not intended to be exhaustive, and but intended but intends to provide an overview of the recent events. Names of Sahari civilians have been removed from the present fact sheet. The events of 13th of November. The first Moroccan military invasion and the end of a 29 year long ceasefire. On Friday, 13th of November, in early morning, Morocco launched a military operation in the area called Gurgarat in southwest corner area created as a part of the UN sponsored 1991 ceasefire agreement between Morocco Plasaro Front and it was strictly no go buffer zone for military personnel or equipment of either party According to reports from the ground, the Moroccan military per penetrated the buffer zone via three branches that were opened in the wall separating the Western Sahara occupied Morocco from the buffer zone. Its aim was to forcibly remove a group of Sahari civilians who was staging a peace 
peaceful sit-in that for several weeks had been blocked, blocked a road built and used by Morocco as a trade route from Western Sahara to Mauritania and beyond. The road located in the buffer zone to connect the last Moroccan checkpoint in occupied Western Sahara and the Martinia border and considered illegal by the Pissarro Front had become a major route for Morocco's export of products to Martinia and West Africa. It is used to export products from Western Sahara that trans transit through the port of Noada Hibo, Martinia. Spanish truckers also use the route to transport seafood. Flossaro refers to Morocco's use of Gergara as illegal. It's claimed as sustained when Morocco and Plasaro entered into the ceasefire agreement in 1988 and the so-called military agreement number one in 1997. The trading point was not there. Eight years later, the EU started talks with Morocco for trade from Morocco in Western Sahara in 2021, in 2001. Morocco st started the construction of the asphalted road across Buffer Strip and Gergara. The UN condemned the undertaking, stating it involved activities that could be in violation of the ceasefire agreement, but never acted on the commercial and civilian traffic in the area. And it has been described in reports by the UN Secretary General. In 2016, Morocco completed paving the road. According to an article published on August 30th of 2016 by the Associated Press, a confidential UN document leaked to the news agency stated that the UN considered Morocco had violated the ceasefire agreement by deploying armed personnel and equipment to the construction site. While Pissarro protests vehemently, vehemently, tensions did not escalate into armed conflict. On the 20th of October, a group of Sahari refugees who had traveled around 22,000 kilometers from the refugee camps in Algeria staged a sit-in on the road blocking, blocking transit, along with protesting the road, which they said was used by Morocco to export plundered goods from their land. They demand that the UN nation mission for Western Sahara finally implement its mandate and organize a long promised referendum on self-determination. The protests included nonviolent direct actions, such as chipping away at the asphalt, forming human chains, chanting, waving signs and flags, playing traditional Sahari games, and even a visit to the nearby Atlantic Ocean where the Sahari refugees dipped their feet in the water. The protesters filmed and photographed their actions and shared them with a wide network of solidarity organizations and supporters. As days and weeks went by, the traffic in both directions grew in length. Protesters periodically allowed some of the some of some to pass, such as Senegalese, Mauritanians, and Moroccan citizens who were trying to get home but they refused transit to trucks carrying goods from Western Sahara. Some drivers turned around while others tried to wait out the protest. Stranded Moroccan truckers in Martania complained to Moroccan consulate that they ran out of money. Bloomberg News reported on the 5th of November that around 150 trucks transit the road daily as Morocco tries to build trade relationships with Sub-Saharan Africa after its econ economy took a dive from the effects of COVID-19 on tourism. The blockade, according to Bloomberg, had already affected prices for fresh produce in Mauritania, which, goes, which gets most of its fruits and vegetables via this route. On the 6th November, reports again began to emerge that the Moroccan troops deployed in Western Sahara was moving south in the direction of Gergerat. And the next day, protesters reported hearing heavy machinery noises on the other side of the Morocco-built separation wall. They photographed a bulldozer. 
on 8th of November, Passaro announced that it remained committed to the ceasefire agreement, but it would not take the necessary action to protect Swahari civilians should Morocco's military enter the buffer zone. In the early hours of the 13th of November, Passaro reported that the Moroccan military had entered the buffer zone via three breaches on the wall and that a group of men dressed in civilian clothing had rushed towards the protesters. Videos emerged of columns of smoke, destroyed vehicles, and what appeared to be civilians riding in a truck. Fasaro said that it had moved the protesters to safety that morning. The Moroccan general staff of the Royal Armed Forces said in a statement that the Royal Armed Forces set up on the night of Thursday to Friday, a security cordon in order to secure the flow of goods and people against the Gergerat buffer zone, leaking Morocco to Mauritania. Plassar responded that the military invasion was a violation of the ceasefire with Morocco, having carried out a military invasion in the liberated territories. During the night of 13th of November, shooting was reported from the front line among a Moroccan built sand wall currently dividing Western Sahara in two. The Plasaro military of national defenses reported 13 November that Plasaro had attacked the wall. The Sahari media outlet Swahari Voice reported, we've received official confirm confirmation that the Sahari People's Liberation Army has launched hashtag artillery strikes against Moroccan military targets alongside the Moroccan military wall that divides Western Sahara. The targets of the strikes are following Moroccan military bases and surveillance points along the wall. Moroccan military base number three, Wahhabis. Moroccan military base number four, surveillance point number 71. Moroccan military base number 17, surveillance point number 172. Moroccan military base number 17 and number 18. A press release from Sahari people People's Liberation Army added that their shelling of Moroccan hashtag military positions had caused losses of life and material losses to the Moroccan army and that the Moroccan soldiers fled some of their positions among the Moroccan wall. Several videos of artillery strikes circulated online. The video have, however, not been has not been verified. The intensification of the military siege in the occupied territories and the persecution of a whole people. On 13th November, shortly after the attack of the Sahari protesters in Gergara, reports from activists inside Western Sahara stated that the Moroccan military, police, and intelligent forces were effectively flooding into the cities of occupied Western Sahara. The Sahari journalist organization Equip Media issued the following statement. The occupation forces mobilized their units in all cities of occupied Western Sahara and terrifies civilians, militants, and activists. Quip Media El Ayu, November 13th of 2020. Moroccan occupation authorities early hours deployed their forces in all streets of occupied Western Sahara cities and imposed strict security surveillance around the houses of Sahari militants and human rights activists in what they believed to be an attempt to attack or intimidate them, such as attacks by occupying army units to control the illegal breach of the Gergerat, Western Sahara. Hundreds of occupying police and ancillary forces have been seen on alert on the streets of LIU city, as well as various vehicles charged with collecting public information, as well as public employees in the occupied city of LIU who are still being used to collect information and pulse from the Sahari population about what is happening in Gurgara, south of occupied Western Sahara. Later in the evening, reports emerged that Sahari human rights defenders and activists were placed under surveillance with their houses being besieged. Some reported that their homes were attacked by military personnel, police and intelligence officers throwing rocks at their houses and knocking on their doors, threatening to enter. According to Equip Media, young Suharis took to the streets to protest the attack on the demonstrators in Gurgara. The following days, Equip Media explained 
and events of 13th of November in the following way. Quit media 14th of November 2020. Friday 13th of November 2020, scores of Moroccan military and police have been deployed in the occupied LAU to suppress any forms of protest against Morocco or any demonstration supporting the decision of the Frente Polisario in resuming war. Raids were made by paramilitary military and police forces of activist homes, such as the House of Fatmatatu de Hawar and the House of Miss Bokila, wife of the civilian prisoner Mohammed Bani. In the evening of on in the evening on Samar streets, dozens gathered to express the support for Basaro and chanted slogans against the Moroccan occupation, but the police quickly intervened and violently attempted to end their peaceful protest. The Sahari journalist organization, Nusha'ata Foundation, reported the same incidents of poli police violence against young Sahari protesting. On 13th November, news was also received stating that the Sahari political prisoners of Gadim Azik group held in Tifelt and Kentra Kentria prison was being subjected to ill treatment and abuse in the form of verbal assaults, threats, increased isolation, and revocation of phone rights. According to families, the prisoners are being followed by guards when they exit the cells and with a guarded guard permanently sitting outside their cells. The events of the 14th of November, massive presence of Moroccan military, gendarmerie, police, and, and intelligent forces intimidated both Swahari civilians and prominent Swahari activists. According to the local activists, the Moroccan authorities are using the corona legislation already in place in order to limit the movements of activists, with authorities having ordered a lockdown. Fourteen of November, continued protest, protest in support of Osaro ended in 29-year-long ceasefire took place. Reportedly, the protesters consisted mainly of young Suharis. Equip Media reported the following. Equip Media occupied November 14th of 2020. Demonstrations continue, continued in the occupied city of LIU in support of the decision of the Frente Osaro to resume the armed struggle for the second day in a row, despite the Moroccan police alert and dem demolition. The streets of Samar, Tantan, Fasit, Mozavar, al Bahi, Al-Nahada, Al-Hara, in Zenga, al Hashit, Al-Hardi, witnessed hundreds of protesters from women and men in demonstrations during which they raised Sohari flags of republic and echoed slogans of enthusiasm. Passing cars joined the protest by honking their horns. The occupation forces with various devices surrounded the neighborhood and violently demissed the demonstration. Eyewitnesses told the Creep Media reporters that protesters faced the oppression of the occupation forces with initially closing the roads and allies to ensure that their demonstration continued before reinforcements from various forces, including elements raiding motorcycles and cars and police chased them and several young men were arrested. Quit media couldn't confirm their identities. On the 14th of November, further artillery strikes by Fosaro on Moroccan military bases were reported. Thefts were also for the first time reported with Fosaro news agency, SPS reporting the following. Shahid al 14th of November, 2020. Attacks of the Sohari People's Liberation Army in units continued against various hiding places of the Moroccan army enemy along its positions in the occupied parts of the Sahari territory, causing losses of lives and equipment and disrupting its military plans. The military community number of two of the military and national defense confirmed that the several military bases, support points and supply centers came under fire. The most recent of it has attacked last night on the 13th base of the 67th 67th Legion in the Bakar centers near Tenlik. Meanwhile, Mahabs in Gurgara sectors witness rocket shell and machine gun attacks. On the 14th of November, it is also reported by the same news agency that Lasara has received a phone call from UN Secretary General expressing serious concerns of the situation. The events of the 15th of November. 
On the 15th of November, military and intelligence forces carried out several raids on several houses with Swahari activists reportedly in search of young Swaharis having participated in the protests on 13th and 14th November. According to Equip Media, at least seven young Swaharis were arrested. Occupation forces raided Swahari houses in response to Friday and Saturday demonstrations in LIU. Quick Media Editing Department occupied LIU November 15th of 2020. Moroccan Special Forces with the police units and intelligence raided the houses of three Swahari families Sunday afternoon without telling them the reason. It concerns the house of Bel Maish, Aham Niha, and Ismaili. A source confirmed that it is, it is about the demonstrations in Zenga, Al Sharif, and Al Arid yesterday to express Wahari support for the decision of the Frenti Fosaro to resume armed struggle. Later in the day, Quib Media provided further information into the raids, calling on the ICRC to in urgently intervene quickly. November 15th of 2020. Hordes of occupation authorities raid a number of Swahari houses in the occupied LIU in Zamahali neighborhoods and at the end of Tan Tan Street and Batma. Intimidating Swahari families and arresting a number of young people on the pretext of their participation in the demonstration in the city yesterday. We did not get the overview of the detainees and raided houses. These Moroccan violations of Swahari citizens come after protests in the occupied IU over Morocco's violation of the ceasefire. The declaration of the Frenti was sorrow to end the ceasefire in the beginning of the war is an illegal, is illegal and legitimate justification, which obliges the International Red Cross to intervene and to protect Wahari civilians and to enjoy all their rights, especially their right to peacefully demonstrations. According to Equip Media, the raids carried out on 15th of November followed with arrest and torture. On the 15th of November, the Sohari journalist organization Nishat to publish the names of two of the young Soharis arrested, reporting that the two men had been subjected to torture of a violent nature. Nishata issued the following statement. Western Sahara, as war begins, Morocco escalates violence against Saharis. Nashata Foundation staff, 15 November 2020. Al Ayon occupied Western Sahara. Nashata Foundation, a nonprofit media and human rights organization based in the war zone of Marokkan occupied Western Sahara, has learned that the two days ago, victim age 16 was abducted by the Moroccan authorities. After breaking down the door of his family's home last Sunday, the Moroccan police forcibly removed victim and transported him to the police headquarters in the downtown of occupied city of El Ayon. All over the next 24 hours, victim was subjected to a horrific torture and abuse that he is currently unable to move or speak. When his family attempted to assertion his whereabouts, they were told that his, their son is being held as a civil prisoner in Ben Al Mahadi Hospital in El Ayon. In an interview with Nashata Foundation, victim's mothers described a conversation that the family had with a doctor who was in charge of, his, of their son. His family has been forbidden from seeing him and they have been told by the doctor that he is currently being targeted for mental and psychological issues resulting from his mistreatment at the hands of occupying authorities. Furthermore, his doctor described his condition as critical. The wrongful capture of victim is just one instance of widespread campaign by Moroccan authorities to threaten, abduct, and silence Saharan citizens include living in the occupied territories whether they are ordinary citizens or political or human rights activists. These actions are understood to be in a direct result of the situation that arose in the Gurgara buffer zone last week. On Friday, November 13th, Moroccan authorities attacked peaceful protesters in a double violation to the national law ending a 30-year ceasefire agreement with Bosaro. The Sahari protesters then returned fire and that has led to a declaration of war by Bosaro. Today, the situation continues to escalate as plainclothes policemen have been leading a contingency of special forces from house to house, searching for Saharan citizens who clashed with the Moroccan authorities yesterday. On the 15th of November, further Bosaro attacks were reported. Its press agency reported, Bailar liberated territories. Fifteenth of November, twenty twenty. For the third consecutive day, the Sahari 
People's Liberation Army fighters continue their intensive attacks and shells on the trenches of the Moroccan occupation soldiers last night and today among the brim, despite the enemy's air stories and the responses of his cannons. According to the military community number three of the military national defense and intensive attacks of the Swahari People's Liberation Army targeted the following Moroccan military positions. Base 17 and base 18, the Farsha sector, base number 13, the 67 Corps in the Bakar center sector, base four of the six Corps in the dirt region and surveillance point 71 of base seven near Lararish and Fordra Lagarb in Hawazab sector, base 13 of the dirt of Hawaza sector, base 25 of the 4th Corps in the Um Lakta region of the Farsha sector, base 20 of the 68th Infantry Corps of the Absar sector in the Tham Hajo region. The community concluded that the attacks have left many dead and wounded soldiers, as well as those who deserted from the battlefields, dealing a harsh blow to the morale of the soldiers and officers of the Moroccan army. The events of the 16th of November. On 16th November, further raids of houses of Swahari civilians and prominent Swahari activists were carried out in the Swahari neighborhoods in the cities of occupied Western Sahara with American forces looking for youth who participated in the demonstrations. According to the Quit Media, a total of 25 young Swaharis have been arrested in response to protests carried out in the latest days. The raids carrying with them intimidations, threats, and abuse were intended to intimidate Swahari civilians and activists, according to Equip Media on the 16th of November. Equip Media issued the following statement, Occupied LU, the arrest and intimidation campaign continues and raids on media activist house, houses. Equip Media, editing department, November 16th, 2020. Moroccan occupation forces raid several houses in the occupied LIU to arrest a number of young men for participating in the peaceful demonstration organized in LIU over the past three days to demand the independence of Western Sahara and in the support of the decision of the Frente, Frente Porcelaro to resume the armed forces and the liberation of the Sahari Republic from Morocco. These raids included the home of activists, victims who were not in their homes during the raid. The Moroccan arrest and intimidation campaign continues, and the fate of the detainees is not known, not yet known after the occupation authorities have banned their families from visiting them. On the 16th of November, the police had raided the homes of two Sahari journalists, Mohammed Hadi and Sharif Bakhil, from the media collector Nashahata. Foundation. They were reportedly able to flee, and they, as well as other journalists from Nashahata, have gone into hiding. In the past years, media activists from Nashahata had reported from being followed and monitored, and several have been, been arrested. Most recently, on the May 15th of 2020, photogra photographer Ibrahim Rahabli was arbitrarily detained in LIU by agents in plain clothes and accused of, among other things, insulting public servants and violating quarantine regulations. An urgent appeal from the frontline defenders def stated that the arrest and direct reprisal of his peaceful and legitimate human rights work documenting violations in Western Sahara. On 16th of November, further Pulsaro attacks were reported. Its news agency stated, the Swahari People's Liberation Army units carried out today, Monday's intense attacks on the Moroccan military wall, a defense targeted different positions of the army forces, according to military communique, okay, number four of the Ministry of National Defense. Targets, the attacks targeted the following enemy positions. Morning point 71 of Hazar sector at 7 a.m. Base number four of Angala sector from 8.30 to 9.30 a.m. Base number 20 near Rus Sabati at 12.30 p.m. Warning point 191 of Farsir sector at 
10.50 a.m. and at 2.30 p.m. Base number 12 of 47 Corps, Mundurega at 11.50 a.m. Base number 4 of 63rd Corps in the Bokar sector at 2.15 p.m. The Valiant, the Valiant Sohari People's Liberation Army units continue to strike the invader strongholds among the wall of humiliation and shame, added the Kumuki. SPS. The events of 17th of November. On the 17th of November, it was reported that the massive presence of military, police, and intelligence forces was still increasing. According to local activists, the cities of the occupied territories is currently placed under a fierce siege with few people daring to leave their houses. According to the activists, the repression has led to the muffling of demonstrations with civilians not daring to enter the streets. On the 17th of November, equipping media detailed the events of the latest day by publishing the following statement on their website. State of war and violent repression of civil protests in Western Sahara. Following the action of Moroccan occupying forces in Gargara against Sahari civilians on the 13th of November, 2020, and the response also alarmed by the Basaro against the Moroccan brand, which cuts the country, the Sahari Sahari's of the various cities of Western Sahara have expressed their support for their national liberation movement and its act war action. In Morocco's occupied Western Sahara, west of the Brent, towns have been besieged by Moroccan sec security forces with checkpoints blocking all roads, and the homes of Sahari militants have been particularly monitored. Every night since February, Friday, thir November 13th, 2020, hundreds of demonstrators have been taken to the streets of Alayu and Dakala, Dak Dakala, in the streets of all districts of Alayu, demonstrators shout and wave SADR flags, chanting "Free Western Sahara." Long coined convoys of cars join the demonstrators, honking the horns. Clashes between clashes took place with the Moroccan security secret, security forces, who wanted to disperse the crowds. Encirclement of neighborhoods is not without difficulty everywhere. In the districts of red apartments, the demonstrators succeeded in completely closing the streets, thus blocking the access of occupied forces. They gathered to continue the protests until Moroccan reinforcements succeeded in dismantling the makeshift roadblocks. The protesters were then chased away by motorcycle squadrons, police cars, and auxiliary forces. 25 young Soharis were arrested after the demonstration. They are in solitary confinement and banned from visitors. According to several accounts, Moroccan agents in masks and or in civilian clothes mixed with the crowds of demonstrators filmed the activists, including the leaders who then chased and arrested. In Occupy Dakala, protesters took place in Kisat, Kisat and um, Tunisi. Neighborhood, neighborhoods in the Um Tunisi neighborhoods whose inhabits habits are Saharis forced to leave the villages of Bir and Zaran, 150 kilometers east of Dakala. Women came out in large numbers, shouting against the Moroccan occupation and the support of their army. We want to return to our village, to live free without worry under the flag of the Sahari public. We are also interested in choosing our way of life without fear, says one participant. In Borja Hor, four Sahari civilians arrested on November 16th are appearing today in LIU. Since November 15, long columns of Moroccan military reinforce reinforcements have been absorbed in LIU, Tan Tan, Dakha, and Samar. Samara. Equip media, November 17th of 2020. Sahari Human Rights Organization is called, published the following statement on its Facebook page. The Sahara Human Rights Organization, ISCOM, published the following statement on its Facebook page. Statement on the kidnapping of Sahari militants and raiding of family homes. The Sahari organ against the Moroccan occupation, ISCOM, was notified on several raids carried out by the Moroccan occupation forces against a number of Sahari family homes in the home city of LIU. After several 
deterioration of human rights situation in the occupied cities of the Sahari Arab Democratic Republic. This has taken place after the military aggression launched on Friday the 13th November by the Moroccan army against Sahari civilians who are peacefully protesting in the front of a legal breach opened in El Gurgurvat region. The raids are part of retaliatory campaign targeting the Sahari civilians after Morocco violated the ceasefire agreement signed between the Fronte Placaro and the Moroccan Kingdom in 1991. In this record, we have registered the following violations. Raided homes in the occupied cities of LIU. Victim, victim. Victim, 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 and victim. One of these, one of this family members was bitten by security agents and victim, their son, victim, was arrested. In occupied city of Bodo Hador, the Moroccan repressive forces arrested three minors, mainly victim, victim, and victim, in addition to young man victim on the evening of 16th of November of 2020 after they participated in a protest demonstrating the independence and the immediate withdrawal of the Moroccan occupying forces from Western Sahara. The minors were presented under arrest under before the persecutor of the king in the first instance court of the Moroccan occupying state. He also received information from eyewitnesses regarding the prosecution of peaceful demonstrators, demonstrators in the occupied cities of Dahala and Samara, who are also participating in demonstrations to demand the Sahari people's right to freedom and independence. We further learned that the Sahari activists, Ali Saadini and Nuruddin al Argobi by were abducted on November the 10th of the of the afternoon. Two police officers from the Moroccan security services took part in the kidnapping operations near Tantan -Tan Street in the occupied cities of LIU. The activists were intercepted by two security agents in plain clothes. These two police agents were well-known torturers named Ali al Bihifari and the other known by the nickname Oda Sohima. Both have committed numerous violent crimes and repressive practices against Wahari civilians in total impunity. Ali Saaduni and Nuradin Agubiyai was bitten inside police vehicles, then transported to separate directions towards the northern area of Al Habunia where they were again subjected to physical and psychological tortures in the outskirts of the city. Then they were threatened to be incarcerated and even raped if they continue expressing their demands for freedom and independence. The Sahari Organ Against the Moroccan Occupation condemns the intimidation, violence and raids on the Sahari citizens during the past two days, as well as kidnappings, torture, and serious abuses committed against the Sahari activists Ali Saaduni and Nuridine Agubai, as a result of their peaceful struggle and their steadfast reje rejection of the continued Moroccan occupation of Western Sahara. We also would like to withdraw to draw the attention of the international community towards the seriousness of the crime of forced disappearance previously carried out by the Moroccan authorities of occupation in the occupied cities of LIU against several members and militants of ISCOM, as well as hundreds of other Suhari civilians, many of whom are still missing. This is one of the most heinous political crimes that require the attention of all peace-loving people and to ensure that the perpetrators are taken to justice. The Sahari organ against the Moroccan occupation, while we consider that the cowardly kidnappings of, of Ali Saaduni 
in Noradine Arkabiyai is a revenge measure deliberately committed by the Moroccan secretary forces. And while we continue to be concerned about the constant monitoring and persecution of members of ISCOM by Moroccan police vehicles using special tag numbers since the end of September 2020, and wonder if it is related to the preparations to kidnap them. We call on the International Red Cross to intervene urgently to pressure Morocco in order to implement and respect the Fort Geneva Convention on the protection of civilians, civilians in time of war after the Moroccan occupation regime ignited a new war against the Sahari people on November 13th. Therefore, we remind the ICRC of responsibilities it has ignored for a long time under the pretext that there is no war in the territory. We also launch an urgent appeal to the United Nations and all the international human rights organizations to, intens to intensify their pressure on Morocco to find out the truth and circumstances of the operation of kidnapping carried out by the Moroccan authorities. We also call for the perpetrators mentioned above and many others to be brought to international justice. We condemn the Moroccan regimes continued acts of intimidation against Sahari civilians, including physical and verbal attacks, as well as raiding of their homes. Behold, the United Nations responsible for Morocco's persistent in these violations due to its decades long silence on this issue. We call on United Nations High Commissions for Human Rights and its related organs to dispatch investigation missions to the occupied territories, particularly now in times of war. We renew our call to the ICRC to guarantee international protection for Sahari militants by virtue of its responsibilities in accordance with the Fourth Geneva Convention, and we hold the United Nations and its various organs responsible for the safety and security of the Sahari peoples, whom it has failed for 30 years on false promises and delays as a result of their submission to the Moroccan pressures. The Executive Bureau of Sahari Organ Against Moroccan Occupation occupied LIU Sahari Arab Democratic Republic, 17th of November, 2020. On the 17th of November, Further Placaro attacks were reported, as news agency reported. Bir Lahalu SADR targeted territory 17th November 2020 SPS, the Sahari People's Liberation Army SPLA fighters continued on Tuesday for the fifth consecutive day. Intense strikes on the enemy entrenches along its walls of humiliation and shame, causing human and material damages, according to the military communique number five of the National Military Defense. The strikes of the SPLA fighters targeted the following positions of the arm, enemy army. Warning point 51 of the 29th Corps of the Amgala sectors at 6 Oh, 6.40 a.m. Base 19, the Mahabas sector from 9.40 to 10.07 a.m. Base 8 of the 70th Corps of the Hausa sectors in Faharat al from 1300 hour to 1315 p.m. At the same time, the Sahari loyal young people continue to join with pride the fighting fronts and military schools. On the 17th of November, news surfaced that the Bosaro three demands for ending the war are close to the Gurgarat crossing to set a date for the referendum and to free Suhari political prisoners. A recent report published a report published in April 2020 details the different cases of Sahari political prisoners, Sahari human rights defenders activating for social justice and activists who demand the celebration of long promised UN referendum on self determination for Western Sahara, are often charged with violent crimes, torturing, tortured into signing confessions, and given long prison sentences, effectively ending or severely limiting their advocacy work. The arbitrary detention of Sahari human rights defenders have been widely documented by the UN 
United Nations Human Rights Mechanisms, particularly on the UN Working Group on Arbitrary Detention, whom have founded the Sahari advocating Sahari's so advocating in favor of self-determination is subjected to discriminatory practices and breach of the, of the quality of human rights. We are especially concerned about the health and safety of human rights defender and political prisoner, Ahaya Mohammed El Hafid Ahazaya, who remains disappeared since October of 13th when he was removed from his cell at Zarikam prison and taken to an unknown location after telling his family that he had been exposed to a prisoner ill with COVID-19. We fear that Ahaya's case may indicate Morocco's intent to weaponize COVID-19 against Wuhari political prisoners. An urgent appeal, Frontline Defenders has called from Morocco to allow his family access to El Hafzi Aza and to release him. The latest developments in the case Ahaya Mohammed fell in line with continuous and systemic racial discrimination and punishment of Sahari political prisoners, continuing through their detention and also, we, and also recently witnessed in other cases. Two of the members of the so-called student group were recently transferred within the prison, Abu Zai Karn, with one of them, Elk Antwa El Beharu, Beharu being subjected to the physical abuses before being forced to stand for six hours in the courtyard of the prison under the scorching sun. Their, course, their case was treated in opinion rendered by the UN Working Group on Arbitrary Detention, opinion number 67 of 2019, holding their detention in arbitrary and the students should be released. Still, Morocco has not implemented the decision. On the contrary, the young students have been subjected to acts of reprisal in response to their appeal made to the United Nations. On 21st of October, a young Sahari student, Al Hazim Al Bakir Ibrahim, was sentenced to 12 years in prison by the appeal courts. Prior to this, his case has been tested in a joint commission communication issued 17th. 7th of July of 2020 by the UN Special Procedures, expressing serious concerns and the lack of evidence. Uses of confession signed under torture as evidence, evidence that Hussein had solely been imprisoned due to his activism. The continued isolation and, and, and ill, Ill treatment of Katara Dahara, a 21-year-old Sahari activist and journalist, recently sentenced to a total of 20 years in prison, remains a great concern, according to a joint communication issue 21 July of 2020 by the UN Special Procedures. In the communication, the UN Special Procedures also expressed special concerns, serious concerns, into the violation of the right to due process. The continued isolation of several Gadim Zik Isaac prisoners similarly remains of great concern after being held under arbitrary detention for nearly a decade following their arrest in conjunction with the dismantlement of Gadim Zik protest group in the occupied territories of Western Sahara in November of, of 2010. The case of Gadim Isaac prisoners have amongst other been treated in a joint communication issued by the UN Special Procedures in July of two, 2017, with the special repertoires expressing their concerns over the violation of the right to due process and evidence showing that the activist has solely been arrested and imprisoned in response to the human rights activism and participation in the peaceful protest. Events of 18th of November. On 18th of November, local activists reported the continuance of fierce repression of the occupying forces. Still, few Sahari civilians and activists dared to leave their homes, reportedly leading to the muffling of any demonstrations. Local activists further reports of an arbitrary campaign of violence, stating that the Sahari civilians who enter the streets are targeted and subjected to arbitrary abuse and violence by pro Moroccan police of officers. Actors were supported that Moroccan 
occupying forces are stopping cars and taxis to get people out of them and beat them up and target those walking the streets. On 18th of November, it was further reported of an escalation of the persecution of Suhari human rights defenders with the president of the newly established Suhari human rights organization, ISCOM, and winner of the right of the winner of the Rights Livelihood Award of 2019, Aminato Hadar, being prevented from traveling from the occupied territories of Western Sahara to the Canary Islands in Spain. She was prevented on the grounds that she needed to do a medical examination prior to traveling to Spain. However, her son was allowed to travel to Spain with activists informing that the rules of medical examination in order to travel to Spain does not come into effect until the 23rd of November. Through her Twitter account, Aminato denounced at the airport that she was being illegally stopped from traveling and with the occupation authorities preventing Swahari human rights defenders on discriminatory, discriminatory grounds from leaving the occupied territories. On the 18th of November, reports of also being received that a 12 year old girl had been arrested and tortured by the Moroccan police after having attended school wearing a t-shirt with a, the Western Sahara flag. Local activists reports that the child was subjected to torture and that she was by the Moroccan police forced to sing the Moroccan national anthem while playing tribute to the flag and the king of Morocco. El Gabarat Media issued a statement detailing the arrest of the child. El Gabarat Media, 18th of November, 2020. A Sahari girl victim tortured and kidnapped by the Moroccan occupation forces. The Sahari girl victim was born in victim of, 20, of 2008. She was arrested at El Nahada Secondary School last Monday and transferred to the Secretary Dictatory of Occupation of Morocco, where she was subjected to psychological and physical torture. The reason of her arrest is that she wore a military uniform and drew the RASD national flag on her uniform, school uniform. The Moroccan occupation forces and the Moroccan intelligence team are surrounding the house of the Sohari girl to prevent rights professionals and the Sohari media from visiting her. It is, should be noted that the Moroccan occupation forces threatened the father of the girl that no Sohari journalist or human rights worker would be allowed to enter or that the Moroccan occupation forces would punish him. And after all these events, a girl was in a state of fear and panic and could not return to the school for fear of being kidnapped and tortured by the Moroccan occupy, occupation forces. Reports of attacks by Hussaro was simultaneously being received, its news agency reported. Bar Laho SADR Liberated Territories, November 19th, 2020, SPS. The Sahari People's Liberation Army, SPLA fighters, continued Wednesday for the sixth consecutive day, intense strikes on the enemy in trenches along its wall of shame, causing human and material damages, according to military communique number six of the National Military Defense. The strikes of the SPLA fighters targeted military positions of the enemy in the Fashia, Angala, Samara, and Bahagari sectors. The events of 19th of November. On the 19th of November, reports were similarly being received of arbitrary violence against Wahari civilians in the streets of the occupied territories of Western Sahara. The presence of military police and intelligent forces continue to be massive, with the Sahari activists finding themselves being placed under continuous surveillance. On the 19th of November, reports were received that prominent Swahari activist and human rights defender Sultana Kaya was detained and abused at a checkpoint between the cities of El Ayu and Bujardar after returning to the occupied territories from Spain. Report states that she was beaten under police custody. According to local activists, she was released by, from custody after 1.5 hours and before her release, her house was surrounded by Moroccan police. 
before she released her home was surrounded by Moroccan police. This is a typical modus of Moroccan authorities in the occupied Western Sahara. Whenever an activist returns from a board or from prison, their homes are put under siege to prevent people from gathering and welcoming them. There are videos showing the siege taken from the home. According to Sultana, on her own account and eyewitnesses, including her sister and other family members, police entered the family's home on the afternoon of the 19th of November before Sultana arrived in order to remove several young men who had arrived to welcome her home. Sultana's 82-year-old mother confronted the agents and told them to leave. One of them shoved her violently and she fell against the dorm frame, hurting her back. He then pushed her again and she fell to the ground, hitting her head on the floor. There is a video of the aftermath of the, of the assault with the mother laying on the ground. At around 4 a.m. on the 20th of November, her conditions were so concerning that the family took her to the Bodar Provin Provincial Hospital. The family was told that she was in a serious condition and needed to be evacuated to the hospital in LIU, but that she could not be occupied if accompanied by anyone. So they decided to take her home. It should be noted that due to prior experiences, Swahari, particularly well-known activists, considered Moroccan-run hospitals in Western Sahara to be unsafe places and do not trust the medical teams or treatments that they, that they prescribe. The Bohardar Hospital did issue a medical report, which had been shared, noting injuries to her back and head. The case was listed as aggression. The family also has an x-ray, which they have also shared. There is serious concern for the mother's health and the family is too afraid to return to the hospital and is unable to transport her to LIU or to obtain medical help from a trusted doctor because police is not allowing anyone to enter or leave the house. On the 19th of November, in response to Amanato Sadar's having denounced her illegal ban on the traveling the previous day, Royal Morocco Airlines issued a statement that Amanato Sadar had tested positive for COVID-19, reporting that the incident, reporting about the incident. Quoted, the BBC quoted the document by Royal Air Morocco stating that the reason for Hadar's flight plan was that she had tested positive for COVID-19 which Hadar prominently denied through another videotaped statement in which she also called on the ICRC and human rights organizations to assume responsibility in protecting human rights defenders in Western Sahara. It appears that Sadar Hadar, Hadar has sing, was singled out for discriminatory treatment through the weaponization of COVID-19. A prominent pro-Moroccan activist by the online name of Zine El Abdidine El Wali, whose profile information states he is Vice President of the Sahara League of Democracy and Human Rights, LSDDH, also shared on his Twitter account an official looking document with Moroccan Ministry of Health letterhead that included Hadar's passport number stated that on the 12th of November, she had tested positive for COVID-19 per a lab called Kamar, who have not been able to verify, we have not been able to verify the document, but we are deeply concerned about the nature of this type of online activity, which can induce to hatred, stigmatization, stigmatization, and violence. Reports were further received that drones were flying over the occupied cities of Dahala in southern Western Sahara. Several reports have been received of drones flying over LIU, terrorizing its citizens. The news, the Sahari news outlet, Sahari Voice out, outlet, reported that the drones were acquired through a Moroccan Israeli $48 million arms deal. On 19th of November, further attacks were carried out by Kosaro. Its news agency reported, Bahira Lahalo. Sohari Republic, November 19, 2020, SPS. The Sohari People's Liberation Army units conducted today, Thursday, intense attacks on the Moroccan military walls of defense, targeted different positions of enemy forces, 
causing significant damages along enemy ranks, according to military communique number seven of the military, the Ministry of National Defense. The strikes of the SPLA fighters targeted for the seventh day, seven days consecutive military positions of the enemy in Farsia, Angala, Kaza, and Amdrega sectors, SBS. Number three, the Western Sahara conflict and relevant practice of the, human, of the UN human rights mechanism. Western Sahara is listed by the United Nations as a non-self-governing territory, subjected to the right to self-determination in the conformity with the principles contained in the UN General Assembly Resolutions 1514 and 1541. In 1975, Morocco invaded Western Sahara, a territory in which it does not hold sovereignty over. At that time, Western Sahara fell under the administration of Spain as an administrating power. The fact that Western Sahara, at the time of the Moroccan invasion, was placed under the control and authority of Spain renders the conflict, conflict an international armed conflict. Morocco's presence in Western Sahara is therefore one of an occupying power, following under Article 42 of the 1907 Hague. Hague Regulations in Article 2 of the Fourth Geneva Convention of 1949. The part of Western Sahara, I'm estimated to be around 80%, has thus been placed under occupation by the Kingdom of Morocco since 1975 and subsequently illegally annexed. To this day, the situation in the territory remains a humanitarian crisis with systemic, systematic gross human rights violations and breaches of international humanitarian law being committed as directed consequences of the prolonged illegal military occupation. Milita Morocco has as the occupying power the de facto control both over most of the territory and the people living on the occupied land who are deprived of their civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights. The Moroccan authorities exercise power arbitrarily in occupied Western Sahara through the use of police and military forces in order to control the activities of citizens to limit the freedom of people, in order to prevent further support for the call for the right to self-determination. The use of force against Sahari's form part of a state policy intended to silence the call for for self-determination, whereas Swaharis are subjected to systemic and systematic persecution by the Moroccan occupying forces, accumulating in numerous human rights violations and violations of humanitarian law. The systematic and systemic persecution of Swahari activists and civilians have been widely documented by the United, Human, United Nations Human Rights Mechanism. The UN Working Group observed these trends, amongst other, during its visit to Morocco from 9 to 18th of December of 2013. After its mission, Morocco in 2013, its visit to LIU, Western Sahara, the working group stated that it had considered the situation in LIU Western Sahara and found that torture and ill treatment were used to extract confessions and that protesters were subjected to excessive use of force by law enforcement officials. It had also received numerous complaints indicating a pattern of excessive use of force in repressing demonstrators, demonstrations and in arresting protesters or persons subjected of participating in demonstrations calling for self-determination of the Swahari population. The working group found that people arrested are beaten, insulted, and forced to reveal names of other protesters, and that these practices are aimed at punishing and intimidating protesters in order to prevent further support for the call for independence.
Similar observations were also made by the United Nations Committee Against Torture and the Special Rapporteur on Torture, having expressed the concerns regarding the systemic, systematic use of force against the Suhari population, highlighting that people advocating for the right to self-determination are subjected to comprehensive police violence, abductions, torture, and subjected to arbitrary arrest and arbitrary detention. The working group has similarly documented the political persecution of Suharis in numerous decisions rendered, as documented in opinion number 39 of 1996, opinion number 4 of 1996, and opinion number 11 of 2017 concerning Saha Nadine Basar, and opinion number 31 of 2018 concerning Muhammad al Bambari, and opinion number 58 of 2018 concerning. Ahmed Ali Otat, in opinion number 60 of 2018 concerning Mubarak Dahodi, opinion number 23, 23 of 2019 concerning Larasi Nahador, in opinion number 67 of 2019 concerning the student group, and latest in opinion number 52 of 2020 concerning Ali Saadoni. The opinions render, document, render documents how Soharis are subjected to a arbitrary arrest and, in, and detention in response to their opinions and their support for the right to self-determination in breach of the equality of human rights with the persecution of Swaharis constituting racial discrimination. The opinions rendered by the United Nations Working Group on Arbitrary Detention was supported by communications issued by the United Nations Special Procedures. Communications issued by the Special Procedures include interior alia the communications issued in relation to the arrest and torture and the breach of the right to a fair trial for the Gadin, Gadin Azik prisoners who were arrested in response to their opinion and their exercise of freedom of assembly in a peaceful protest camp, Gadim Azik. In addition, the communication issued in response to the violent arrest of Sohari activist Wadi Salik El Batan and communication issues in response to the legal charges and brought against the Sahari activist Nahaziha El Khadidi and document thoroughly the persecution of Sahari journalists. The latest communication issues issued relates to the imprisonment of young Sahari journalist Qatar Ada Dada and imprisoned Sahari student Hassan Bakar Rahim further documenting the systemic persecution of Sohari by Morocco. And how you, its individuals and non-government officials and community can help is, I'll repeat this again, what you can do to respond to the calls coming from the occupied territories of Western Sahara, we encourage individuals to number one, reach out to elective public officials in your city or area and ask them to highlight the issues of Western Sahara and the repression in the occupied territories. Two, write an article in your local newspaper or contact journalists to make them aware of the escalation of Western Sahara conflict and the repression in the occupied territories. Three, organize a demonstration or meeting in your community in order to, in order to protest the continued illegal occupation of Western Sahara and the persecution of Sahari human rights defenders. Four, use your social media platform to tell about the suffering of the people of Western Sahara and join the international campaign referendum now for Western Sahara. And number five, encourage five of your friends or family to do the same. To respond to the calls coming from the occupied territories of Western Sahara, we encourage national NGOs to, number one, write a letter to your national government and ask them to denounce the current situation in the occupied territories of Western Sahara. Number two, write a letter to United Nations Secretary General Antonio Cortez to urge him to immediately take action to prevent a humanitarian crisis in the occupied territories of Western Sahara. Three, write a letter to the Moroccan government and ask them to ensure respect for the obligations both under the international human rights law and international humanitarian law to ensure that all Sahari activists and civilians are free to conduct their activities and express their opinions without fear of any form of retaliations. And four, take public actions by writing an article 
or issuing a in public appeal or create a campaign in support of the right to self-determination for the people of Western Sahara and denouncing the continued illegal occupation and the repression in the occupied territories of Western Sahara. And lastly, five, organize a demonstration or meeting in your community in order to protest the continued illegal occupation of Western Sahara and the prosecution of Sahari human rights defenders. And for more resources, um, check out Democracy Now! Four Days in Western Sahara. Um, looking on the internet, um, there's so many. And I to um, end this by saying please, by ending this healing and justice Tautala with please stay safe, look after each other, and may peace be with you all. Tofa soy fua. A love for our soul family, and we're gonna get through this. And I dedicate this episode to the Sahari people of Western Sahara, for them to have a voice, to have freedom and self determination without the fear of violence and fear. I love you. Wafatai to Alava. Wow.